Make sure that you guys drop a like in the next five seconds if you want the Zapatron to return in Season 9. <laughs> Of course, with all the brand new skins and cosmetics coming out in the Fortnite over here at USK, we will be gifting subscribers, so if you guys want to get a chance to get gifted a skin or a new cosmetic, make sure that you guys drop a like, and then also comment down below, free gift, as well as your Epic Games ID. Fucking pop it, you know it's wrong, but you'll never ever stop it. She got a grip in my heart, she snatched my locket. Heartbroken kid used to tote that pistol. Still up in the hood, switch to a pencil. But I always have shooters leave you on the stencil. Yo guys, what's going on? It's Hydro. Welcome back to another video over here on the USK channel. And in today's video, guys, we're actually gonna be talking about something that has been forgotten. Basically, nobody is talking about this gun anymore. However, we thought we would bring it back up because it's actually pretty interesting that goes along with what Fortnite is doing right now in this unvaulting event. That, ladies and gentlemen, what we are talking about is the Zapatron weapon. Now, I'm sure most Fortnite players do not know what this is. If you guys don't know what this is, it's not a problem at all because most Fortnite players started playing Fortnite way after this gun was actually in the game. Believe it or not, this gun got vaulted two days after Fortnite Battle Royale officially came out two days after it came out so the gameplay that you saw and also i'll put it back up on the screen this gameplay is original like this is like before the season shop was even a thing the item shop before seasons you know existed this was basically like day two day three of the game that's why not a lot of people know what the zapatron weapon is as you can tell the gun was incredibly overpowered this gun was actually branded as a sniper rifle which is pretty interesting because even though this gun does go up fairly far distance Distance. it's not like a sniper rifle where essentially there's bullet drop and whatnot if you guys don't know what bullet drop is if you guys have a heavy sniper or just you know a bolt sniper rifle you guys know that there's bullet drops so if you shoot someone directly that's far away the bullet won't hit them because the bullet's gonna drop the zapatron however it had no bullet drop because it was an electric gun it literally just shot straight at anything you were aiming on so you didn't have to precisely aim your uh sniper up or down or whatever it just literally went straight at the person and boom they were dead the gun kind of reminds me of the infinity blade if you remember that in season seven when they released that that pretty much got vaulted two days after it came out as well so it kind of reminds me of that honestly but obviously just before seasons were even a thing versus season seven it kind of still happened the infinity blade just happened when fortnite was obviously a lot more po uh, popular now obviously you clicked on this video because zapatron might actually be coming back into fortnite in season nine the reason why we are thinking this is because obviously you guys know the 14 days of fortnite event is happening right now for summer and each day fortnite is unvaulting a weapon that has gotten previously vaulted such as let's say the heavy shotgun the tac smg the p90 stuff like that basically just weapons that have gotten vaulted before they're actually unvaulting them. i'm pretty sure the current one right now is a double barrel so i'm hoping i'm really really hoping that fortnite actually decides to unvault the zapatron because me personally i never got to play with it i wish i did i started playing fortnite probably i don't know about a week after they vaulted the gun i started playing fortnite very early it was like beginning of october i might have even started it like in late september when they released it i can't remember if Officially, I do know for a fact that I started it in early October though or at least around that time so I never really got to play with the Zapatron and even back then I still didn't know what it is that's how fast they vaulted it and that's how overpowered the gun really was like I said it reminds me of the infinity blade in season 7 so let us know what you guys think there's no official news about this or there's no official leaks this is just a conspiracy because like I said obviously the 14 days of Fortnite are happening right now and they're unvaulting a vaulted weapon every single day so I'm really, really hoping they actually give us a chance to use the Zapatron weapon. The only reason that I think they won't unvault it is because, like I said, of how overpowered it was. And obviously, you 
you guys saw it. It's going to be pretty hard for them to obviously brand it as the Zapatron, but have it as the same amount of damage that it used to do, but obviously make it playable, right? You can't have a gun that does 700, 800 damage that kills literally anybody in its path, but obviously have it in the game and people enjoy it, right? They have to have some sort of balance where they can re-release this gun, but obviously have people use it to the point where it's not too overpowered and it literally shreds everybody in its path. I'm super excited. Let me know if you guys are down in the comments. Like I said, man, drop a like if you guys really, really want the Zapatron to come back, man. I know for a fact we really do because a lot of people haven't actually tried this weapon out. Like I said, if you're an OG OG Fortnite player and played it on the first day, in the second day it came out, then you guys probably experienced the Zapatron. We still have a couple of days left in the 14 days of Fortnite, so we'll see. At this point, we can only just hope that they unvault it for a day and let us see what it's like in Season 9. Anyways, though, guys, that's going to be it for today's video over here on the USK channel. Like I said, man, my name's Hydro. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace. Knocking that team out right as the teammate went over. Now Demento's trying to find some room. So far, they have gotten 13 points from this match, but they need to pick up the pace there. We saw the top duo was on 60 plus, being up 44. Needs every possible points as 27 picks up Trox. Demento still trying to tarp over, edits himself back in, finds an angle, but immediately gets cut off. Provoked, finds the conversion onto 27, and Dementos is just gonna chill popping that utility and again we've talked about it just so many more risks in time you get there as i was going to drop down and start to get test one shot two shot three shots can he find it four finally gets it after using six of the 10 combat shots there but stops provoked and gets him into the top five that could have end up being huge but Pulse and I'm the Beast working top down right now look at the chaos on the low ground Tohaj being picked up by Benji Fishy and evade ADDZ adds closing him out there another player who has played in the skirmishes before Beast trying to find whatever space he can Dementos blowing up adds there as now it's a 1v2 Dementos in the bottom right I'm the Beast in the top right with his partner Magis Pulse and there for the high ground Dementos goes launch pad straight up Max Glidehead comes in can he build it away Magic pops him off. Dementos tried to get back in the zone, but Magic Pulse brilliantly done so well executed. And that is why they're on the top, sitting up there currently with the 62 points. What a close, close match going right down to the wire. One more shot is all he needed there, but it was not possible to not connect. The duo does hold it down. Once again, this pattern, very, very smart solo play there, making sure he can pick up all the eliminations before the game ends, even though it's a 1v2 spot right here. Now we got Nauka and MXR who are both chilling in their big base. Looks like next to Stormline as well, one of the best positions you can be in. Very, very nice loadout there for them as well. They've got their long range beam, the follow up with the drum as well, and that crucial combat shotgun, which did get nerfed a little bit on this patch, but it's still the fire rate and that swap delay coming off allows you to make so many cool plays. They both are sitting on zero eliminations at the moment, so they must make this effort to catch up near the end of the game. Yeah, and just one thing in terms of the combat shotgun change, I feel like it's kind of mitigated just because of the uh, removal of the shotgun timer. It ends up allowing you for to kind of do, a lot of people call it the TPU Classic, where you're ramping out and you're able to effectively tarp and shoot at the same time with very minimal amount of exposure. And I think it sort of makes up for the slight uh, change in the range in terms of the tiles and how much damage it does to so the combat, still being very, very, very strong in the current meta, but you can see MXR being able to push in, trying to find the conversion, is some pressure from above and just goes for it. Gianni Jr. showing why he's not Gianni Sr. being taken down there outside the top 20. No placement points for you and a lot of time wasted in that lobby. Just a dope reaction there to look up and then look straight up or straight ahead of himself. MXR just carrying that fight right there. Yuntos and Ryu now getting focused by the whole server. Very unfortunate when this happens. Stinks coming down as well, so that's going to be a very, very hard situation to get out of. Ryu now going down. Haiko getting his third elimination, putting him and Ono Kill together on the same um, or on four eliminations there, making sure their points get counted up. 35 points total at the moment. That placement points going to be coming in in four more duos coming down. 35 people left alive, so that zone surge will also be an option as well. Yeah, and that was a high value stink. And that's one thing you talk about, you know, it feels really unfortunate when you're getting focused by the whole server, but the reason you're getting focused by the whole server is because you're in an obvious one by one that was just rebuilt without priority on the next zone. If everyone is going to focus you, it's much easier 
easier to just pile in. You can hear the riff go off left eye, trying to hit it, trying to do everything he can. Will end up finding it there. Storm Surge is active as we have 18 duos left and 34 players. So pretty much everyone has a buddy with them. And then, yeah, absolutely. This is going to be a stacked team-based endgame at the moment. A lot of four-gun loadouts also coming in. Uh, together right now. Dan Zizzle going down on Shadow Nades. A lot of multiple high ground tarps. A lot of, a lot of them uh, go down. Kazorla is going to be up top. One Shadow Nade left on Heiko at the moment. Andre going down from Kazorla's high ground pick. He gets finished off. Heiko gets that big reward off of it. The match, the utility campfires as well for the end game. Pickaxe is coming full swing, making sure every wall is theirs before they set on the next move. Not quite in zone yet, but that tunnel will be very, very proficient. We we're talking about those combat changes as well before. That also changes the range of engagement as now we have more ARs. The style of the game and how it actually flows as more people are basing up to shoot rather than shooting on the fly if they're not going to be able to box fight changes the way people move around the map as well. And it kind of has given a little bit of a resurgence what we've seen so far to the drum gun. It allows the drum gun to have a little bit more of that mid-range feel to it to where it is going to outfire. Been screaming, couldn't stand the sight of leaving. Been through too much to hold, all the demons. Stole a cherry in the heart, yeah. All the secrets, 